We moved into a new house on January 4th. It is now February 13th, and I have still not taken a single deep sky image from the new backyard. This Canadian winter sucks. desperate backyard amateur astrophotographer would do in this situation. I'm gonna process some old data. Bright deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula has a really intense core that can be easy to blow out and clip the highlights in a long exposure image. The trick is to combine a set of images taken at a much shorter exposure length and blend those in to create a high dynamic range image. I'm gonna show you how to do that in Photoshop. This isn't the only way to do it, but it's the way I like to do it, so I hope you enjoy. Now at this time of year, a lot of uh, those of you that are in the Northern Hemisphere have shot a lot of images of the Orion Nebula. It's just a beautiful beginner target this time of year. And uh, now being about mid-February, a lot of, hopefully you've been able to capture some decent data on this subject and you're now faced with the task of processing, which is probably the funnest part. So I just wanted to go over a few things here in Photoshop, including using layer masks to create a high dynamic range image of the Orion Nebula, because that core is quite bright. So by using multiple exposure lengths, you can create an image with a high dynamic range that covers those outer wispy faint details, as well as the uh, detail and structure of the core of the nebula, which is can be easily easy to blow out uh, and have the uh, the highlights clipped on the histogram in your photo because it doesn't take long before it just gets too bright and it records as just pure white. So if you look at my screen here in Photoshop, I've got a few layers going on here. So first of all, the, the, the data is was shot in my uh, Bortle Class 8 backyard, so very uh, a lot of light pollution and uh, it was shot with a DSLR camera, so a bit noisy as well, but not bad, all things considered. It was shot through a, a wide field refractor telescope. Uh, the image has been cropped. And most importantly, the images have been processed to get it to this stage. So um, I stacked sets of long exposure images. So to create this one you're seeing on the screen right now was a set of about 50 three minute exposures at ISO 800. And then on the next layer, I have a stack of about 20 10 second exposures at ISO 800. So you can see it's quite different what you're able to record in uh, those periods of time. So the longer exposures naturally capture much more detail and some of the, the faint stuff around Orion, whereas these 10 second exposures capture the detail in the core. Now, this, this data could be a lot better. Normally, uh, if, if this, I, I'm not, I can't remember the conditions, this was shot in 2017, but you can't really decipher the, the trapezium in there. It's kind of a blob, but there's normally four stars that you can see in there, but much better than the totally blown out whiteness of the core in my long exposure stack. So we can flip back and forth between the short exposure stack and the long exposure stack. and. To get these files together, I of course use Deep Sky Stacker to combine the images and create a file with a better signal to noise ratio, uh, which included dark frames, but no bias or flat frames. So I actually spent quite a bit of time just processing the images to get them to this stage. And then I won't reveal the final top layer here, which is the process version of the combination of the two. Uh, so let's go through the process of blending these varying exposure length stacks together. There's a few ways you can go about this and uh, most people prefer to use the layer mask option in Adobe, Adobe Photoshop. So how that would work is I'm just going to copy the long exposure version on top of the short so when I turn it off I see that it, the short is sitting underneath it in the layers palette here. So if I created a layer mask which is just this this button right here, it creates this layer mask on the long exposure version and then with the black and white set as the foreground and background in my brush panel here, I can actually paint in with the brush 
uh, and remove the areas that are too bright. So obviously you need to be very careful about this because something like I've just done here is a very unnatural look. And you can see this, the area I've taken away uh, and revealed the underneath layer from the layer mask. I'm just gonna hit Control Z and undo that because I wanted to first make sure that you understand that you need to use a very soft brush here. So make sure the hardness is turned all the way down, a nice big soft brush and the size will depend on the resolution of your image. This one's quite large. I've got pixels of 2200 by 3400 here, so it's a pretty large image. So I'm using quite a big brush, and then the opacity is set to 100 right now. We wanna turn that down to something more conservative, like about, so let's say 18%. So it will take a lot of clicks before it starts to really reveal the layer underneath. So with the layer mask in place, I can use the brush tool set to 18% opacity and uh, I've just scaled it down just a little bit so we can have a little bit more control and making sure we're on the mask layer, I can begin to reveal the core underneath. So I've just done three clicks there, but you can already see I've got more detail than I did in the original photo with just pure white clip details. So as you can see it's starting to reveal itself and this is where you need to be really careful because um, if you do it too aggressively it's just going to look very unnatural. The goal of the whole process here is to have the, a high dynamic range image that shows as much detail as possible but still have the object looking natural. Uh, sometimes you'll find with the Orion Nebula you'll see a very flat looking image that's almost appears like has a plasticky look. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of that, that style because it just looks a little too unnatural for my taste. But I mean, it is astrophotography image processing. So unless you're collecting scientific data, you can do whatever the hell you want. So just have fun with it. Uh, with that being said, if you're going for this kind of look, um, this is how I would go about it. So again, I'll just take away a little bit more here and we're seeing some of those bright details reveal themselves. And so I've perhaps overdid it a little bit. And uh, as you can see, because the point of the brightness is in the center of the core, as soon as it starts to go from bright to dim uh, in that transition stage here, you've kind, of, you've kind of lost the natural look to it. So you need to be careful with that. Another thing you can do at this stage to, uh, to kind of help that is turn the layer down of the uh, shorter exposure in between. So you, you can control it from both angles. So something like that where I've got 60% underneath is kind of nice. And then whenever you've got um, a version of the image that you like the way it looks, you can do that Control Shift Alt N plus E and it creates that merge layer on top. So let's just have a look between the original and the version we've just done. It's actually not that bad as quickly as we did that. So if you don't like using this layer mask technique, you can just do it using the eraser brush as well. So I'm just gonna turn those layers off, copy the long exposure, put it on top of the short, and just simply use the eraser brush set to a really low opacity. I've got it set to 5% here and then just erase away the details. So this gradual painting technique uh, is very manual approach and very creative. Uh, not for everybody, but I kind of like the control. And uh, as far as uh, having a non-destructive workflow, I, a lot of people give me a hard time for that. The way I get around that is by simply copying base layers and always, always having another original layer to put on top and then I do a lot of playing around with the, the opacity of the layer I do put on top. So this is the version with the bottom revealed. If I feel like that's a little too strong or I want to find some middle ground, I can always place the original on top and then dial that back on the opacity too. So I think you get the idea of what I'm doing here. And uh, let's see how close I am to my original final version. So here's what I consider the final. Uh, blending those two different exposure length stacks together. And it's a very natural look. 
I mean, this could be pushed even farther. Um, but again, I guess it depends on the mood I'm in that day. But today I feel like having a kind of a more natural, less aggressive looking Orion Nebula in the Running Man. And uh, yeah, these days I'm all about having, I'm trying to collect quality data as, if, as opposed to just pushing the, the crap out of the details and really hammering the, uh, the saturation and sharpness. I just like quality smooth details. And you know what, for a DSLR camera from the city backyard, this isn't a bad shot of the Orion Nebula and the Running Man. So uh, I hope you learned a thing or two about blending exposures together and processing the Orion Nebula. And uh, stay tuned to the Astro Backyard YouTube channel for a lot more stuff like this. Uh, it's a lot of fun, so clear skies.